Hello, hello, hello! Welcome, I'm Philip Magnus, and this is my High Mountain Impressions video. Warning, spoilers! So, High Mountain is a touring centric zone. The first one I remember playing through since, well, Thunder Bluff, is it? Or was it Buff? Anyway. And that was when I made a Torrent Shaman. Like 10 years ago, at the least. <laughs> World of Warcraft has gone a long way since then, and that shows. High Mountain is similar to Valshara in so far as that we have to go to three different places on the map, and we have to get things done in order to get help. Well, in this case, we're interested not in individuals, we were interested in druids in Valshara, but in entire Torin tribes. The quests here to get a few tribes to unite under High Chieftain Mera High Mountain. An inexperienced leader who needs to find a way to lead her people. To understand what it means to be a true leader, like her great ancestor, the legendary Torin hero, Hjolm High Mountain. And here comes my personal favourite moment. A flashback to the War of the Ancients, from 10,000 years ago, during the original Legion invasion. During said invasion, flashback, I took control over the legendary Torin himself, slapped around hundreds of demons and kicked the dreadlord Verimetrus's ass, as well as spoke with Malfurion. And also, I do believe I even got blessed, or rather, he got blessed by a demigod, none other than Scenarius. In retrospect, Holm is an absolute badass, plain and simple, and if we had to have like 10 of him, the Legion's ass would be kicked out of Azeroth as quickly as you can say, super cow. Taking temporary control over such a great hero was quite a lot of fun, killing harpies on the other hand, uh, really wasn't. I felt for a big part of the quest line through the zone that there was quite a lot of disconnect with what World of Warcraft Legion should be about. I just didn't feel any urgency. Um, I didn't feel that the zone would soon be invaded by demonic hordes and foul creatures of all kinds. Not at all. And that, I think, is my biggest disappointment with it. That disconnect was not what I was hoping to get from High Mountain. I was hoping for a more natural, more interesting view of the battle against the Legion. I just wasn't expecting to fight Torrens who were, yeah, sure, they were corrupted by the Legion Torrens, but they really weren't all that impressive, were they? No, not at all. And that was kind of not great fun. But hey, everyone gets disappointed once in a while. What else did I like, though? Don't get me wrong, I absolutely adored certain moments in the zone. Spirit Walker Ebonhorn is one of my new favorite things about World of Warcraft. You see, he is this ancient advisor who, seemingly in Marla High Mountain's own words, never ages. The reason for that, spoilers, is because he is actually a black dragon. Yeah, he was saved by Holm High Mountain with the help of the hammer that is one of the pillars of creation that we're after. So he was saved by Holm and he became a loyal servant. And that's where the name Ebonhorn comes from. Black Horn, literally. And yeah, I just... I absolutely love that bit. 
I completely love the fact that we have shifted back a lot of the focus of these games towards Dragon Law. There are a lot of dragons, again, they play, if not a main point, at least a very important supportive role in the narrative of the game. And as a complete dragon file, this is something I adore with no reservations whatsoever. Uh, but I wasn't too interested in the story of Corruptorin, as I said, or in the British drop bar, which are creatures native to High Mountain. They look very barbaric, very strong, but not too intelligent, which doesn't mean that they are not intelligent, in fact. As one of the quest lines in the zone progresses, we in fact gain an ally among the Drogba, and we even get to visit an entire village of those creatures. And we kill a lot of Murlocs. Yeah, something about Murlocs, this expansion... They are fan favorites, so I'll let that one slide. The environment was great, of course. Uh, from forests filled with Etin, those are giant cyclop-like creatures. They do have two eyes, though. I mean... Just picture a cyclop with two eyes, that's what the Etin are. Um, there were also cobalt caves and Neltarian's lair. Deathwing's lair, in case you don't know who Neltarian is, he was the dragon aspect of the earth. He became corrupt by the ancient gods, the old gods, pardon, and he became Deathwing, the destroyer whom you are probably familiar with as being a big bad black dragon who was the primary antagonist of about five books and at least hmm one expansion yes you know which i'm talking about cataclysm that's the one anyway deathwing's lair was filled with visions of the past and a lot of dragon ass kicking there was some more of Hulne High Mountain's story revised, and indeed, Spirit Walker Ebenhorn's own story was discovered in this exact place. The music, once again, completely beautiful. As is the zone, it's all just aesthetically pleasing. But it looked. no, it lacked. Some of the threats that the other zones made freely available. I just don't feel that burning desire to discuss the zone's events away and again and again and again as I feel it with Azuna especially and also with Stormheim, even with Valshara. Huh. What else do I have to say about this? Well, nothing much. The characters, obviously Spirit Walker Ebonhorn is memorable, Hun's story, who, which I have followed back in the War of the Ancients trilogy, also absolutely fascinating. Love seeing Malfurion's younger version, he looked very much a night elf back then, didn't get all these aspects of different animals, he now has like, yeah, you know, the... The words elude me. Yeah. The antlers and the bird things. Wings. Yes. Feathers! Feathers! That's the word. The bird feathers that Mulfirin has. He didn't have any of that. And he was much younger. And it was generally a great vision to see him like that. But I don't really have any memorable villain. There was one the Underking, but that wasn't his name, not really. He had another name, and I don't remember that name. It's because I don't think he was all that compelling and threatening. What I said about the God King from Stormheim, it applies in the same way here as well. Just not compelling enough, Blizzard. Try again, try again. No matter. I did get to 110 in this zone, and I have not since started doing world quests, which are absolutely amazing, 
and there are literally hundreds of them, which means I will be preoccupied for quite some time. In general, I liked some of High Mountain, I loved some of High Mountain, and I disliked some of it as well. I just thought there was too much in it that was bland and uninteresting. And at the very beginning of the quest line, you spend around an hour just not doing anything much, kicking bear asses or whatever like uh, worm asses and, s and throwing fishes into a pond which is not my idea of having fun it didn't have any compelling storytelling but things picked up later and that's when it got better for me anyway anyway thank you guys for watching I hope you enjoyed this little rant I had and if you did Please click that like button. If you didn't, click that dislike button right next to the like button. Please subscribe, share this video, comment, and as always, join me next time. Bye!